It's true when they say that money can't buy happiness. For Stephen, he had absolutely everything he wanted, except for a love life. Time and time again, his relationships and marriages failed. And while he had built an empire for himself, he was yearning to share it with someone else. Then, he met Lana. But unfortunately for Stephen, Lana wasn't willing to share. Here are their stories. Stephen Clayton was born in 1954 in Florida. He studied at a local military academy and then went on to graduate from Florida State University. He later founded his business called Physical Therapy Resources, which was a networking company, and he spent most of his life focusing on this particular business. Stephen was someone who had many hobbies. He loved to write poems, enjoyed playing golf, traveled frequently, and when he is at home, he frequently gardened. Stephen had quite a green thumb. In fact, it was known around the neighborhood that Stephen had one of the best gardens in Fort Lauderdale. Many locals actually went out of their way to visit Stephen's home because of how exquisite his garden work was. He bought many exotic plants and made many flower arrangements that were absolutely beautiful. They were so beautiful that his work was frequently on the news and newspapers. Later in his life, after making his fortune, he dabbled in collecting valuable art, which he meticulously placed around his home. Clayton eventually sold his company in 1995 and became a consultant for a young businessman. He acted as a mentor to many young adults and even established scholarships for those who deserved it. At this point, he was already a millionaire, so he spent a lot of his time and money giving back by sponsoring children's sport leagues like martial arts. He even donated a lot of his time to these children by coaching them. Stephen eventually moved to South Carolina, where he decided to build a home on Lake Willie. The home was a very large mansion worth around a million dollars. This particular home was even an exact replica of the first president, George Washington's home in Mount Vernon. Stephen eventually gained millions more in assets, which allowed him to spend time in however he wanted. So he had a boat that he frequently utilized, went on wine tours, and often engaged in social activities. Even though Stephen was very successful in his line of work and career, his love life was a bit bumpy. He was married six times, and after those six times, that's when he met Lana, who was at the time 10 years younger than him. Stephen fell quickly and hard. To Stephen, Lana was perfect. She was compassionate, hardworking, worked as a medical professional, worked with veterans, and also frequently attended Bible studies. A close family friend, Ken Sanford, even said that Stephen's new partner, and I quote, was a nice lady. At this point, Stephen was very happy with his career and newfound love life. Stephen and Lana eventually got married and spent most of their days in a luxurious mansion with their beautiful greyhound dogs. And from the outside looking in, they were the perfect American couple. Then, on July 21st, 2018, Stephen's lifeless body was found in the lobby at the bottom of his stairs. Everybody assumed that Stephen, who was 64 years old at the time, tripped and fell from the stairs to an unfortunate and accidental death. Lana, now a widow, looked heartbroken, and close relatives mourned the death of the beloved Stephen Clayton. All the while this was happening, the police began their investigation and started inspecting the house. The authorities found some oddities that forced detectives to look at the situation in a different light. The police started doubting that this was an accident. For example, the mattress and Stephen's clothing were wet. In fact, they were soaked in urine. 
This detail was consistent with Stephen being immobilized at some point and was in bed for some time. They assumed from some sort of illness. Because of this weird circumstance, the authorities thought it was best to send his body in to the medical examiner for an autopsy. While the detectives wait for the results, Lana arranged Stephen's funeral. Then, the autopsy results were released. Stephen Clayton's system contained a high dose of a chemical substance. The substance that was found can usually be found in vasoconstrictive and decongestant drugs. Clayton actually frequently used a product that contained this drug, which were his eye drops. An interesting fact about eye drops is that it is only safe if applied according to instructions. However, if someone were to take these substances orally, this drug can quickly enter the bloodstream and can be fatal. Doing so would be considered a poison, and when orally ingested, the substance interferes with breathing and causes tachycardia. Forensic experts concluded that the man somehow took the medicine orally, and this was the cause of his fatality. The police relayed this information to Lana, and oddly enough, she started to behave in a strange manner. In fact, Lana even insinuated that she knew about the substance being in Stephen's body. Lana also suddenly had an explanation for the substance being in his system. According to her report, Stephen frequently added his eye drops into his coffee because he wanted to induce a laxative effect, she said. The police immediately became suspicious of Lana due to her having so many readily available excuses about Stephen's passing. They also doubted Lana's claims because it would be out of character for Stephen to do something so irresponsible such as risking his health. The authorities believed that Stephen had no idea that he ingested the substance somehow. The suspicion darkened as it became known to everyone that Lana Clayton quickly filed a lawsuit in the inheritance court, demanding that she can be recognized as the sole beneficiary of all the assets that her deceased husband had left, and because she was his wife, Lana was able to obtain all of Stephen's wealth. The circumstance was piling up against Lana, especially because she was the one that benefited the most from Stephen's death. Therefore, the police began to consider Lana as the number one suspect. The police began digging into Stephen and Lana's relationship when they stumbled across a weird incident that occurred just two years prior to Stephen's death. In 2016, Lana actually shot Stephen in the head with a crossbow while he was sleeping. Lana was not formally charged because Stephen insisted that it was all an accident. Lana explained that the situation with the crossbow was triggered accidentally. She went on to explain that she was trying to load her crossbow and was unable to, so she went up to Stephen's room to ask him for help. When she realized Stephen is sleeping, she decided to leave and that is when Lana said that the accidental crossbow shot had occurred. Clayton woke up in a panic as blood flowed from his neck. Stephen did not blame Lana for the apparent accident. He even told investigators that he did not believe his wife was trying to kill him. A year after that incident, a year after the accident, the police laid this circumstance to rest and closed the case as an unintentional accident. But now, the police are second-guessing themselves and they wondered if the crossbow accident was just an unsuccessful attempt of getting rid of her husband. According to the autopsy report, Stephen's body had so much poison in his system that what was given to him killed him that same day. However, according to the report, his body had been consuming the poison for three days straight. It was overkill. All the evidence pointed to Lana being the one responsible for the poisoning. With this information, the police decided to arrest Lana just a month after his death. Lana was threatened with at least 30 years in prison for Stephen's murder. In the state of Carolina, murderers are usually sentenced to life imprisonment. But a circumstance involving poison, the courts are able to sentence her to death. Considering the severity of the situation, Lana decided to plead guilty to manslaughter and poisoning her husband. In the interrogation, Lana said that Stephen suppressed, mistreated, insulted, abused, and strangled her. She claimed that she was just angry at Stephen and only wanted him to suffer. Lana also admitted to adding his eye drops to his drinks. However, she said it was more impulsive than premeditated. According to the widow, she only wanted to inconvenience Stephen, not necessarily kill him. She told Judge Paul Birch, and I quote, I wanted him to leave me alone. But the judge responded with, How can you say that you did this to teach him a lesson when the evidence shows that you let him suffer for three days straight? 
Lana's defense tried to use her career as a nurse as a defense, and also tried to use trauma of rape as a scapegoat. According to her lawyers, Lana exhibited signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. However, back in 2016, when Lana was initially interviewed about the crossbow accident, none of these allegations were even brought about by Lana. Relatives of Stephen denied her evidence of violence. They went further to state that Stephen was a wonderful person and was very caring. They believe that Lana has tried to kill him for years. Stephen's godmother addressed a judge and said, Lana deceived many people. Please do not let her deceive you. She then proceeded to call her a monster. The prosecutor requested 50 years in prison for Lana. The reasoning was that she let Stephen suffer for several days under the influence of poison. There is also evidence of Lana throwing his phone in the lake so that Stephen was unable to call for help. It was also revealed that the widow burned his will, probably in an attempt to obtain the entirety of his estate. Lana Clayton was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Hey guys, thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys have ever been in a situation like this, I want to know more about it below. I might even give you guys a shout and try to include you guys in one of these videos if that was the case. Um, but hopefully not because that would be terrible. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you guys can get notified for the next time we upload a video. Thank you guys so much.